everyone. This is Mina. Today, I have exciting information to share with you. A wonderful, easy way to become and stay healthy with hydrogen. Hydrogen is a topic that is becoming extremely popular. Japan was one of the first countries to use hydrogen on a wider scale. They have gone from drinking hydrogen water to the last trend breathing hydrogen gas. Products and services range from drinking, breathing, and eating to hydrogen drip feeds and even washing with hydrogen water. So, just why do we need hydrogen? And what does it have to do with the health? These topics were covered in deep in my entertaining second and third episode. There is an amazing number of hydrogen products on the market right now. Even hydrogen water goes by a variety of different names hydrogen ion water, negative hydrogen ion water, hydrogen ion enriched water, hydrogen molecular water, hydrogen water, hydrogen enriched water, hydrogen water machines, hydrogen water cups, hydrogen gas machines, power required, no power required. It's enough to make you have a spin. So, which one is best for us? Many people are asking these questions. Detailed answers coming up in the episodes 4 and 5. Most of people checking out hydrogen water machines only pay attention to hydrogen concentration, that is the total hydrogen content. But is total content really the only critical feature when choosing a hydrogen water machine? As long as someone shows you a high meter reading, Is that really all you need to know before plunging down your cash? Whether it is a hydrogen water machine or a hydrogen machine, what are the criteria for hydrogen gas safety? The answer is hydrogen purity. Nothing else is more important. Making sure that hydrogen is pure enough to use within the human body is the only way to be sure it is safe. According to FDA standards, If hydrogen is to be used in the human body, it must be of sufficient purity. A correct approach is thus to first verify that purity meets safety standards. Then and only then should you consider hydrogen concentration. Standards for hydrogen purity will be explained in episode 5. The second important factor is the amount of hydrogen. Its concentration, which represents the degree to which hydrogen is beneficial for our health. Different production methods will cause the hydrogen to be pure or contain various impurities. Instead of being beneficial, hydrogen that contains impurities can actually be harming us. If one is dealing with impure hydrogen, it makes no sense at all. To focus on which brand products the highest concentration. Because it is difficult for gases to dissolve in water, the third point to consider is the technology used to help bring this about. This will be explained in episode 5. How can hydrogen remain stable for longer periods so that we can take our time drinking it? We shouldn't have to worry about the hydrogen dissipating right after it is poured into a glass. Having to go down hydrogen water as soon as it's produced is obviously far from ideal. Fourth, ensuring that hydrogen and oxygen flow along different channels is also very important. This will also be clearly explained in episode 5. Hydrogen intake is done to improve our health in a comprehensive manner, improving one aspect of our health while damaging others makes no sense at all. That is definitely not what we are aiming for. Suffering ill health because we choose the wrong machine would be terribly ironic. This is one of the main reasons why I want to share my experience. I have been drinking hydrogen water for more than 10 years. My initial experience was with a Japanese company. 
It was the first company in the world to produce high-quality hydrogen water packed in aluminium foil. I really felt so fortunate to have come across this company. At the time, I was in the early stage of liver cirrhosis, but hydrogen substantially improved my health and that of my family and friends. Often in unexpected ways, together we gave witness of the enormous health benefits of hydrogen. And for that, I am extremely grateful. When it comes to packed hydrogen water, it is still the highest quality product in the world. The problem is that the price is really high, so not everyone can afford to keep drinking it for a long time. This is my only regret. However, thanks to technology, the newest hydrogen water machines have turned hydrogen water into a one-time expense. Hydrogen is now much more widely available, and far more people can easily enjoy the health benefits of hydrogen. In 2016, when I started to inhale hydrogen gas, I was once more amazed at its power. It turns out I could now intake an even higher volume of hydrogen. Hydrogen gas machines are the next big trend after hydrogen water machines. I will have more to say about this in episode six. When it comes to learning the health benefits of hydrogen and the techniques for gas generation, over the past twelve years, I have attended many lectures by internationally renowned specialists in the field of hydrogen studies. I have derived much benefits from these lectures. To save your time, I will be summarizing the most important hydrogen-related findings and clinical research. And I believe that in taking knowledge before in taking hydrogen is the smartest way. We must all do our homework. When selecting hydrogen-related products, everyone should exercise good judgment. Choose products that are truly safe. Beneficial for your health and free of hidden risks. I believe that the information I'm sharing will be an indispensable magic weapon in your arsenal of health tips. You will be happy to find that hydrogen is the most economical and convenient way to maintain health and youthful vigor. Hydrogen for health. Get more bang for your buck. In order to understand the extremely important role that hydrogen plays in our bodies, we must first start by looking at how and why our health deteriorates. Managing your own health has an ethical dimension. If one person falls sick, an entire family can be thrown into crisis. Caring for a sick relative is a very heavy burden. This basic idea is very easy to grasp. If we want to stay healthy, the first things we need to consider is how and why our health goes downhill. When we were born, almost all of us were young and healthy. How is it that, with the passage of time, we slowly get old and fall ill? One person who tried to solve this mystery is Dehan Harman, who spent forty years studying the process of aging and disease, the answer free radicals, a discovery that won him the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. Since free radicals make us old and sick, let's find out where they come from. The first source is overuse of pharmaceuticals. We know that. Drugs are poisons, which cause our body to produce lots of free radicals. Indulging in alcohol also causes us to generate lots of free radicals. Third is eating deep-fried food. We know that oil heated to the smoke point has become very unhealthy. Food cooked in such oil is hard to digest and is definitely harmful. The oil in restaurants. Which is reused over and over again is even worse. 
the risk of using bad oil is obvious, but the health hazards of deep fried foods pales in comparison to the next cooking method. Barbecued food is much, much worse. The entire surface is covered with smoky. That's carcinogenic substances. Even worse is swallowing burn parts, which are entirely carcinogenic. Just cut them off. Otherwise, you might wind up with the cancer of the stomach or colon. By the way, did you know that eating one charcoal grilled sausage does as much damage as smoking 50 cigarettes? Why do that to your body? This is why people should stop indulging in barbecue food during holidays. Free radicals are nothing to celebrate. Another thing, avoid excessive exercise. Now you might think this is an odd thing to say. Don't you have to exercise to stay healthy? That is absolutely true. Exercise is indeed beneficial. However, exercise should always be done in moderation. Overly intense workouts are actually harmful. This is why the average life expectancy of athletes is some 10 years shorter than ordinary people. In episode 5, a doctor on the news will provide a more detailed explanation. Stress also generates a lot of free radicals. It is common knowledge that happy, stress-free people are healthy people. Nobody goes through life without encountering some form of adversity. The key is to bounce back quickly and not let such things get you down. The health hazards of electromagnetic waves produced by mobile phones are already well known, but they are so intimately connected with our lives that it is now almost impossible to isolate ourselves from their effects. Next problem, adulterated and contaminated food and meat that contains antibiotics or hormones. Of course, without antibiotics and hormones, livestock grow slowly and experience high mortality. Even aquaculture requires antibiotics to improve survival rates. Fruits and vegetables form part of most normal diets but it is difficult to grow them without pesticides and chemical fertilizers. Yet, another source of the free radicals in our bodies. Overwork and staying up all night long produce even more free radicals. With all these factors in mind, it seems quite difficult to protect our bodies from being ravaged by free radicals. Of course, some people might say that they don't have any of these bad habits, they grow or raise their own food, don't even have cell phones and never stay up late. But even if some people are lucky enough to live free of all these modern parents, they are still not safe. Sorry to break the bad news. Even breathing produces free radicals. Let me explain. If you cut an apple and leave it exposed to the air, it turns brown. This is called oxidation. For us humans, it's the same story. For every second that we are breathing, our body is being oxidized. Now it turns out that oxidation causes aging. So why is this? The oxygen that we breathe circulates via our bloodstream to all the cells in our body. What is for? The oxygen that we take in is needed for combusting the nutrients that produce energy. This is how mitochondria do their bit to keep us alive. Out of all the oxygen that we inhale every day, only 98% is completely combusted. The remaining 2% becomes active oxygen species which are highly aggressive free radicals. While it is true that free radicals attack our healthy cells, are they all bad? Actually, our body contains both good and bad free radicals.
good free radicals help us fight bacteria and viruses, but toxic free radicals can seriously damage our health. If you like this series, please do remember to press like and don't forget to subscribe for more quality information. For follow up information, you are also welcome to contact me via live WhatsApp or WeChat. Thank you.